This is mouth tape, and I've been wearing it every night for the past four years. It's one of the simplest, cheapest health hacks that has made a big difference in my life, and I believe it can make a big difference in yours. Let's dive in. This video is sponsored by Headspace. Hey guys, it's Robin, and welcome to the Science of Self-Care. On this channel, we talk about health science, we talk about life philosophy, and we do a whole lot of self-care experimentation. Today, I'm so excited to finally get into the details of my four years of wearing mouth tape every single night. I kid you not, I do not skip a day, even if I'm traveling on an airplane, well, rather, especially if I'm traveling on an airplane, I will bring my mouth tape. And in this video, we are gonna talk about why the heck I do it, my personal experience over the past four years. We're also gonna get a little bit into the science behind this all. Now, there isn't a lot of science on mouth taping at night specifically, but there is a lot of science on nasal breathing, which mouth taping at night inherently supports. And lastly, we're gonna actually test a few different tapes out together. I get a lot of questions on what type of tape I use, and we're gonna see what the differences are, how they feel, how easily they come off. So if you are someone who's been interested in trying mouth tape or you're just starting to play around with it, this is definitely the video for you. Let's get started. So I wanna start off by talking about why I have been mouth taping for four years. What do I notice? Why do I keep doing it? Number one, I wake up a little less puffy and a little less red. I naturally have rosacea, kind of flushy, sensitive skin. I'm wearing makeup right now, so you can't really tell, but I'll show you some clips without my makeup on and you'll be able to see that. So my skin really shows when things are inflamed or when I'm sensitized. And I've noticed that mouth taping has actually helped calm sensitivity in my body. That sounds so vague, but my rosacea is less and puffiness of my face in the morning is less. This also coincides with just overall throat health. I used to, when I would wake up in the morning, often have a sore throat, a very dry, raspy throat. And now that never ever happens. I always wake up with a nice lubricated mouth. <laughs> I just wake up feeling so good. And that's another thing I've noticed. Again, this is my personal subjective experience, but I feel like I actually sleep more deeply and more continuously when I tape my mouth. When I don't tape my mouth, I will wake up sometimes with a sore throat or just not feeling great. I don't sleep as deeply and continuously. I also don't get congested in my nose when I wake up. Previously, when I used to sleep, and often that would be naturally with my mouth open, I would wake up with sniffles, a congestion. So then you have a congested nose and a sore throat, and it just, it would make it feel like I was waking up sick, when in fact, taping my mouth has reduced and resolved this significantly. Sometimes my mouth tape will fall off or I'm traveling and I will have my mouth open while I'm sleeping and then I will wake up with these symptoms, a dry throat, not feeling great, congested nose, and it's always when I've been sleeping with my mouth open. So I'm just so passionate about this topic because I'm amazed how such a simple intervention that's cost effective and anyone in theory can tape their mouth shut at night, it has made a world of a difference for me. And maybe the last thing I'll mention is that I generally try to practice mewing, which is resting your tongue in a certain posture at the top of your mouth. And I used to, when I was younger especially, have a lot of jaw clicking and pain in my jaw. And by being very conscious of where I hold my jaw, that's helped a lot. So taping my mouth at night helps me to continue that proper mouth posture for the eight hours that I'm sleeping. I have something called posterior open bite, which means my teeth don't lay flat in the back. You're supposed to have teeth that perfectly lay flat on top of each other. My teeth actually touch in the front, which is not good. It degrades the front of your teeth. So this is something I'll probably have to address with orthodontics in the future. The point is my mouth is not naturally in the best position. So mouth tape really helps support better mouth posture. There's a few additional things I wanna mention. If you have some sort of obstruction in your nose and you're not going to be able to breathe easily enough in the night when you're taping your mouth, that is something to talk to your doctor about. What I have noticed is that practicing nasal breathing has supported my ability to get enough oxygen through my nose. 
I'm still not able to get all the oxygen I need, especially when I'm exercising, but it's something I'm trying to continue to practice and work up to. But this is my little disclaimer in here to make sure you're exploring this in the context of your health, your body anatomy, and talking to your doctor about this. I wanna take a moment to talk about another practice that I do right before bed, the sponsor of today's video, Headspace. Headspace is an app that offers amazing audio segments, meditative moments, all made in an effort to help support your mental and physical health. I first learned about Headspace many years ago when I listened to this episode of How I Built This with Guy Raz. It's just an amazing story of how Andy, one of the co-founders of Headspace, completely changed his life through mindfulness and meditation and wanted to give that back to other people. And he himself started recording these guided meditations. And to this day, his voice is my favorite voice to meditate to. And as you sit there, just take a couple of nice big deep breaths, breathing in through the nose, but there's also a bunch of different other voices and types of meditations. A meditation in my mind is anything that brings us to the present moment. And they have so many different types of these present moment audio bits. Whether you wanna be exercising and moving during this audio, I like to walk and listen to inspiring things. Or I'll also listen to very sleepy time stories before going to bed. I recently listened to this immersive hair salon one where it's basically you're going into a hair salon, the sleepy salon. I just love the variety. You can listen to something short, something long. There's going to be something for everyone and all the different audio bits are all made with one goal in mind to help reduce stress and increase happiness in our lives. I think it's beautiful and I think it's very well executed. So if you use the link in my description box or the QR code here on screen, you can actually get 60 days completely free of Headspace. And I feel like that's a really good chunk of time to test it out, see if it's something you're actually gonna consistently use and see if you can find your version of mindfulness within the app. So try it out for free and thank you to Headspace for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to all things mouth taping. Let's talk a little bit about the science of nasal breathing. Why are people so obsessed with it? Probably one of the most important things that nasal breathing promotes is the production of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a gas molecule that naturally is produced in our body and it plays a critical role in several physiological processes. It's basically a signaling molecule that has a powerful effect on our cardiovascular health, our respiratory system, our immune system, and our nervous system. So how does this all actually work? Firstly, nitric oxide helps open up our airways, which improves airflow and helps oxygen exchange. It also helps relax blood vessels, increasing circulation and oxygen delivery to tissues. And lastly, nitric oxide also has antimicrobial properties, which can help us defend against respiratory infections. When you breathe through your nose, you're involving the paranasal sinuses. These sinuses continually produce and release nitric oxide, which is then inhaled into the lungs. And this whole process enhances oxygen uptake, blood flow, and overall respiratory efficiency. Slow, deep nasal breathing increases the time of air in the nasal passages. And this allows more nitric oxide to mix with it. In contrast, when we breathe through our mouth, we bypass nitric oxide production, and we don't get all of these beneficial effects. Another thing to consider is that breathing through our nose involves more filtration of that air. We have a lot of tiny or not so tiny nose hairs and we have mucus that helps trap dust and allergens from getting into our body. And so there's just more of a filtering system when we're breathing through our nose than when we're just breathing through our mouth. Fun fact is that humming is actually known to increase nitric oxide production quite a bit. And my brother-in-law actually sent me a very interesting study on how humming daily could actually help. What, what disease was it? Let me look it up. Chronic rhinosinitis. Strong humming for one hour daily to terminate chronic rhinosinitis in four days. So fascinating. So humming is one way to produce nitric oxide. <laughs> And I don't know, maybe this is something we subconsciously do because it's actually good for us. I don't know, but that's fascinating. The point is nitric oxide production is so beneficial to many systems in our body and nasal breathing actually stimulates this. We're breathing through our mouth, kind of misses out on this whole benefit of nitric oxide mixing with the air that we're inhaling. So when I find studies like this one about how nasal breathing is related to lower blood pressure, it doesn't surprise me at all because nitric oxide helps dilate vessels and it makes total sense that inducing more nitric oxide production in our body would also help lower our blood pressure. 
All right, now it's time for a tape test. I am gonna switch to a different moment in time because I'm currently wearing lip gloss, which is not conducive to things sticking on your lips. So let's fast forward to a different moment in time. To spare you 30 minutes of me meticulously testing this tape, I'm going to voice over this part and give you the highlights. So I tested six different types of tape with the goal of ranking them on stickiness. How well is it keeping my lips shut? We're testing scotch tape. Yes, I know, scotch tape, but there's a reason I keep using it, which I'll get to in a moment. We're testing two types of micropore tape, this black cutout one, which is all over the internet, and this classic micropore tape that you can find in most drugstores. We're testing classic medical tape and these two types of Chinese mouth tape. This one is the first mouth tape I ever used and this is one I acquired later and they are slightly different even though they have a similar shape and look. So I ranked these on stickiness because I love when my lips feel glued shut but I know other people can find this a bit scary and fear that they may not be able to breathe enough air in the night. <laughs> so if you're someone who wants a tape that's a little easier to rip off just for peace of mind, then a less sticky tape might be a better option for you. So choose your own adventure. For each tape, I basically stress tested it, moved my mouth around, tried to open my mouth to see which one would keep my lips sealed. I also would remove it and re-stick it to see how well the adhesive held after multiple uses. This is important because sometimes in the night you might want to take it off for a moment to take a sip of water and then reapply. Please enjoy this montage of me making creepy faces while I'm testing the tape. So this is the final stickiness ranking. In general, after doing this test, I think micropore tape is probably the best option for most people because it is quite sticky. It has a good level of stretch and breathability, but not too much. And it's actually made for human skin, which I cannot say about scotch tape, one reason I continue to still reach for scotch tape is that it's very easy to dispense and it's kind of the perfect size for my lips. So when I'm really tired late at night and I don't feel like cutting a tape down or peeling off the back to another tape, I will just dispense it from the little dispenser. It's so easy and it stays on all night. I don't really recommend doing this because it's not made for our skin, but I haven't had any issues and I do have quite sensitive skin. So related to size, I found that when the mouth tape is too large, as in it extends beyond my lips, it doesn't stick well and it ultimately curls and peels off. Ideally, I just want to catch the center of my lips, the kind of the cupid's bow area, and seal that really well. This is why I often cut down my mouth tape sometimes in half or quarters, and scotch tape is just the perfect thickness for my lips specifically. Something to note about this black type of micropore tape that's very popular online is that it's stretchy in one direction but not the other. So if you are cutting it down, it's important to keep the less stretchy direction along the vertical axis of your mouth so that you're not able to open your lips and breathe through your mouth, which is the whole thing that we're trying to avoid. So make sure it's stretchy horizontally, not vertically. All right, we are back and I would love to know if you have tried mouth taping at night yourself. If you are very conscious about breathing through your nose versus breathing through your mouth, share all of your experiences, stories, questions down below. I wanna hear about your stories. I love learning from you guys and I think you really love learning from each other as well. So thank you to everybody who contributes. And one last reminder that Headspace is offering a 60 day free trial using the link in my description box. Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.